right, and now, of course, to add to the prior um, illustration with a space background, I'm going to add something um, that's a little bit more real, and I'm so excited, I'm really psyched about this uh, Psyche uh, mission that NASA has planned for later this year, that's in October 2023. We are going to fly to a fly a satellite, fly a robot to uh, to this asteroid, which is rich in precious and heavy metals. Prob maybe it was the center of a planet that was informing, uh, formed between Mars and Jupiter and smashed just meteorines. Maybe it was the, you know, the, the, the core on the inside where the heavy metals uh, S uh, settled down and uh, it's uh, has a much higher uh, albedo it has it, it, it sh it's shinier and analysis shows that it's rich in a ton of very precious metal precious for a variety of use cases including of course industrial exploration so there is a real interest in exploring and possibly exploiting this and but what we'll do is we will exploit this image and simply go, let's see if I can go full screen. And what I want to do, this is a picture at NASA's website, illustration, but uh, probably uh, <clears throat> influenced by a lot of real photography and parts. I don't know exactly how much we, ha actually, we, ha we have actually gone uh, into analyzing it yet. Um, but what I'm going to do is simply take a picture of this. Uh, let's do print screen. Um, oh, I got my my other program here for screen capture. I'll just go like this and capture that. And so now we have it in um, Snagit. So I'm going to right click and copy that and go back to Dog Waffle. PD Howler. Firing it up. Come on, come on, wherever you are. There you go. And we may have a few images left. No, I think I, I quit and deleted them. Or maybe, they, no, they're still loading. Okay, so it still has a collection. But I guess I didn't store, I didn't save the this uh, background. But that's okay. So I'm going to go Control V now to, well, first I need to get the keyboard focus. Control V to put that image that I have in a clipboard. Uh, put it right in there as a new image. And there it is. Store that. I don't want the background. I do want the meteor. So I'm going to go and select the background first with the magic wand. Let's go on one of the black pixels. And uh, it hasn't selected much of it. I guess it's uh, a little bit of tolerance. I may have picked something that's not black and it may not be exactly black. So what I'm going to do is give it a little bit of tolerance here to say go beyond. Okay, so now we have this and there's a couple of bright spots like the stars that it did not select either. I could go up higher with the tolerance. Let's go not. Let's not go too high. Um, perhaps one thing to do is add a little bit of blurriness to it. So the trick is perhaps to work this in two stages. One is to uh, create a selection mask and then apply it to the actual image. So I'm gonna go do the following. I have a snapshot which uh, I have as a back as a safe copy here. So I'm gonna go and blur this image a little bit. Let's go select uh, deselect and then blur this image just a little bit with the simple blur or box filter or gosh and it doesn't need a whole lot just a few pixels here and in fact another thing you could do is adjust the uh, uh give it a little bit of bleed with the photographic uh, soft contrast or light diffusion but actually go with the dark diffusion uh where is it boom, 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 boom. There, dark diffusion. Okay, so the dark parts are now bleeding over to the bright parts, and that means that the stars are very likely going to be just black and disappearing. And so that's one way to do that. Then we can go and use the selection mask again, here the magic wand, and that will more easily select everything. We don't need the tolerance to be that high now. Click it, and you have a fairly nice selection of the background without any stars left in there. Now, you can at this point invert the selection um, with selection invert. And if you zoom in, you might see that it's almost perfect, but of course, the image needs to be replaced now. So, I'm going to replace with this image. And you can see the selection mask is a little bit too, too much on the outside. We have this black border around the entire. 
uh, asteroids. So I'm going to shrink it, right? I have the selection on the inside. I can shrink the selection. Let's see what happens if I shrink it by two or three units. Four. Oh, that's almost perfect. Really close to it. Let's go a little bit more. Let's not be too picky here and say, ah, oh, we could we could get rid of one. I don't want much of the black showing, so I'm going to go select one more pixel shrink one more time just one unit so now I'm right on the edge and so what if I lose a few pixels it's really just art <laughs> I'm not gonna be design this and complain about missing a pixel so here it's okay and if you want you could also um, s uh, take a snapshot of that and then you can take the, a, a copy of it here store the selection so you can work with just the selection and one thing you could do here is um, replace uh, it's going to be in, inverted so you now select the out the outside and replace so now you have the outside selected here and you can erase this so along the border where we have partly still some of this uh meteor we could now erase right click here and erase the selected to black and so we go really tight to that and that's a little bit closer to perfect now we can grab this so get the image or get the alpha and uh, invert it and yep so now we have the selected asteroid and uh, store that that by the way stores not just the RGB channel but also the alpha channel um, and so you could now pick this up as a brush let's say brush uh, all the way tight select it as brush or with a little bit margin and then show it as a stored copy manage and store the a copy of this so now you have this in a brush so you can paint with that uh, show the preview and you can have it stamped down in different places in stamp down mode come on there stamp down mode so you can do this and if you have still some background scene and you want that meteor to showing that's how easily you can do that now and because it's stored here you can also easily change a couple of things like the brightness so that's hue saturation value so you can make it a little bit darker you can also rotate it if for example it has a little bit more shininess on the right side or upper side but it's initially in the wrong orientation you can certainly make it so it looks a little bit more like it's being lit by the the, the top here the, the sky if you need it bigger you can go back to a bigger size and there's a bunch of other things you could do here but uh, let's just say this is just like 0 0.0000001 seconds before impact <laughs> this thing is falling down fast if you want to look like it's blurring a motion blur trail here one thing I would do actually is uh, to open another layer for that so let's go open another layer this one is in multiply mode so that's good i'm gonna do I'm, uh, i want it to be exactly stamped at the same place as the most recent brush action so i just use a shift a to paint it again it remembers that most recent click that i did or dab it down and now i can do all sorts of blur with that right? first of all i don't need to preview anymore and i have it in here in multiply mode that's why it looks a little bit darker but I can go into the filters and blur it with, for example, a motion blur or a zoom blur. And so now you see how it's it's uh, blurring it like this. And um, you can set the factor, uh, the quality, and have uh, a nice little motion trail of sorts. This is actually repeating. It's, it's going through the other side. Uh, but you certainly can you can find ways to make this perfectly uh, motion blur kind of appearance or let's see this one here is a little bit too much of it let's say you want this but you don't want it that intense so you then change the brightness uh, the intensity on that transparency on that uh, layer and let's say we want a little bit of a, gl a reddish glue down here that glow could be in another layer so let's go add another layer here and let's say we put this one here too so now this time we i don't think it's going to be exactly yeah that's not the right position we need the brush so let's get the brush and put it here approximately or we could go um perhaps zoom in so we really line it up nicely and then make sure you're still in trans in in single smackdown mode here boom 
and so well it's almost perfect uh, let's go now to see if we have some combinations some modes that will give it a reddish reddish glow is what I'm looking for to indicate that it's like like you know it's friction with the atmosphere and it's about to burn off here so um, let's see if any of these uh, modes will will give us a different look here on that reddish And we may need to do a couple of things to it. Now, rather than just using the asteroid itself, maybe something else could also be... Oh, there's an interesting one. Look at that. What's that? The divide will give us some... Almost like outlines. Really fascinating. But I don't see any of them giving us a red. So we'll need to work with the colors and maybe paint it or something like that. So, yeah, let's not use this one. Undo that. And instead, just go to regular brushes like uh, airbrushes uh, maybe some soft airbrush but make it a little bit smaller uh, something like this and see what that looks like yeah that's about it and so we need a reddish tint for that right now it's a black color let's give it a reddish something like that and of course it's not the right mode multiply mode we need some additive there something like this so let's first erase the whole thing to black that entire layer and then instead of multiply let's go to additive mode and we could do let's see if any of these will do so let's let's give it additive mode and so now we have the reddish look here so to give this a little bit of a glow effect let's go zoom in and do something else um, let's see if we give it more transparency, less less opacity, more transparency, and a little bit of random uh, positioning. So we go here to random position. There, if, there you go. That that gives it a little bit more of control for that. So let's give it actually a lot of that. And it's barely doing that. I'm not quite sure why. Oh, is it? Is it a custom brush? Oh, yeah, it's, it wasn't. I wasn't using the custom brush there. I was using the anti aliased pen. So the custom brush I can do much smaller. There you go. This is too much on the position. So the random position, I just need a little bit. There you go. And really, even less on the transparency, uh, opacity that is very tiny little bit of visibility so now we we have oh there you go now we have some glow that we can add and not get too much of it too easily now the color we might want to do more than just red maybe a little bit of a purplish so there's some white there too okay that and so now you, you do this now if you want you can also add a little selection mask so it's not going too much into this area but more on the front side that's really up to whatever you think this should look like when it's about to go boom. Okay, so let's say we actually have all of the colors now. Let's go like whitish and size is small. Uh, something like this. Paint it right in there. Then we have, and again, remember this is in a layer, so we can also add some extra streaks to that. Let's go a little bit more opacity, perhaps, like this. Woo, that's intense. That's too much. But you know what? Since we're going to do some blurring and, and streaking, um, some some motion blur on that, it doesn't matter if it has a little bit of granular appearance there, because we're about to do this here. We're going to blur, motion blur this time. And there you go. You could go sideways, could go up. There's a little bit of blurring for you. There you go. Then we can also shift the whole thing down a little bit with the transform. Shift. And just move it down. There you go. If you want it uh, blurred sideways, you could do that with the blur. There's a couple of others to zoom. Motion blur sideways, of course. Uh, let's do that. Uh, oh, uh, bokeh blur might look really cool too. Uh, blur bokeh. The bouquet of bouquet blurs. There you go. 
okay. Uh, okay, the bouquet, there it is. And of course, if it's super hot, then we might want to add a little bit. Well, before we do anything, let's store this, uh, just this layer. And then we store, uh, we go to the lens flares again, or the Nova. Lens flares is really fascinating. Um, let's go some of these dudes, like this guy here. There's some hot spot, and there's some hot spot. And it's about to ignite and go big kapowy. <laughs> Look at that. All right. Maybe a little bit of blue here. There's some manganese. And some white coloring, whatever that is, metallic wise. And we're about to go impact here. Now we may want to add another star in the background. Just a little distraction. There you go. So, yeah. Hey, uh, thanks for watching. And have fun painting the same.